One of the most popular alternatives to the Switch Pro controller has been the SN30 Pro Plus, a really nice controller with a nice list of features at the relatively low price point of 50 bucks for what it's offering you. And the company that makes it, 8-Bit Doe, is now releasing a new version with a much more simplified name of the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2. Now, if you already own an SN30 Pro Plus or you've at least looked into it before, you'll probably notice that the Pro 2 looks very similar. Uh, in fact, I actually have the Pro Plus in the same color design and yeah, pretty, pretty freaking close. Honestly, as far as the physical design goes, these are pretty much 90% the same. But what I wanna go over are the differences in features that do set it apart from the SN30 Pro Plus and seeing whether or not those features are enough to change your mind about grabbing one if you didn't grab a Pro Plus before or on the fence about it. And I think even more importantly, if you already did grab a Pro Plus, is it worth dropping another 50 bucks to upgrade to this one? First off, let's talk about the physical differences. Now again, visually, this is mostly the same controller. Most of the changes have to do with some of the new features that I will get into a little later. For instance, you have this little profile switching button on the front here. There's also a switch located on the back now for switching between the different platforms you can use it with, like say putting it in switch mode or Android mode, PC mode, as opposed to having to rely on button combinations like on the previous controllers. Definitely a nice change of pace. Something that's a little more subtle and not that obvious, even if you're looking at the two controllers side by side, the grip is actually a little bit different. I mean, I can hold these two up side by side right now and it's very difficult to see any difference in the curvature, but if you actually hold the controller, it does feel just a little slightly different, mainly in just that it feels a little bit thicker. Honestly, I do like the feel of this grip a little more. It's a very subtle change, not something that's going to be like a night and day difference, but when you go back and forth between the controllers, that change is there. And that's honestly really it as far as physical differences go. Again, the major upgrades here really have more to do with functions. As far as buttons, sticks, and triggers and all that stuff goes, it's basically the same as well. The D-pad feels the same, which is one of the big selling points of the 8-bit controllers is the quality of their D-pad. Sticks feel the same, front buttons feel the same. I will say the one thing that feels a little different, and I don't know if this is just product variants or not, the triggers on my Pro 2 do feel like they have just a little less tension. It takes a little less force to press down. Not a massive difference, it's just when I've kind of gone back and forth between hitting the buttons on this one a lot and the buttons on my older ones a lot, the tension just feels a little less. Kind of like with the grip situation, it's not such a night and day difference that I think you're gonna notice it right off the bat, but if you have both controllers on hand and go back and forth, you're gonna feel that very light difference. So let's talk what's new about the feature list. Again, they got rid of having to swap modes by doing button combinations on the front and replacing it with the switch on the back, which while it isn't necessarily a new function, is certainly something that's a lot more simplistic that I personally really like. With the older ones, if you didn't swap modes very often, it was very easy to forget which button you had to press to put it in what mode. There was a little reminder placed on the inside of where the batteries are, but if you've ever used a Pro Plus, you'll know that removing batteries are actually very annoying. It's actually something the Pro 2 still suffers from and that removing the pre-installed battery pack or removing batteries you put in yourself, it just stays in there a little too stuck. So having to do that just to check what the button combinations were to change modes was really annoying. So I love that it's actually just a switch on the back now. Now again, one of the big new features, arguably the kind of biggest easy selling point for a lot of people, is the addition of back buttons. If you've ever liked having remappable back buttons and other controllers, that is now an option being added by the Pro 2. I will say normally I'm not a huge fan of having back buttons that are directly where my fingers like to rest. I like having them be somewhere that's just a little out of reach so I do have to move the finger and I don't have a chance of necessarily accidentally hitting a button if I'm getting really stressed out in the middle of the game. That being said, the force required to press the button down is high enough that I didn't find myself accidentally clicking it a whole lot. It did happen once or twice, but never in times that were super inopportune or messed things up. And if you don't like having back buttons or you are really worried about that being a thing that can happen, of course you can program them to being null, which is also the default configuration it's in, so that it just doesn't do anything whether you hit it or not. This also plays a role in one of the other new features of the controller that's nice to have, multiple onboard profiles. The Pro Plus gave you the ability to customize the profile of the controller through an app on your PC, so you could do things like change stick sensitivity, remap buttons, program macros, all that good kind of stuff. But if you ever wanted to change those settings, you'd have to rehook it up and change it all over again. With the Pro 2, you can now save three different onboard profiles you can swap between. So if you wanna have certain macros installed or certain remappable buttons ready to go, you can have those on one profile, switch it over when you want to change to different stick settings, so on and so forth. 
And this is actually, I think, one of the kind of sleeper hit big changes about this controller is the new remapping software. Again, before on the Pro Plus, everything was handled on a PC and if you wanted to change anything, you had to take your controller and hook it up. Now, everything is handled through an app that is available on iOS and Android. And I think one of the most compelling things about it is the fact that you can actually use the app customization software at the same time as the controller being actively connected to something else. I actually tested this out a few times where I had the controller connected to my Switch, I was playing around with it, I opened up the app, changed some buttons, hit the sync button, and bam, those changes were immediately made while I was still connected to the Switch, never having to reconnect or change anything, which is awesome. Now, because of the fact that it does store three different onboard profiles, this is likely something you're not gonna have to rely on very often because you should just have onboard profiles at the ready to go. But if you ever do find yourself needing to tweak something, whether that's changing what a remappable button is, or you decide you wanna have a little more stick sensitivity, you can just open up the app on your phone and do it right then and there, instead of having to disconnect from your system, plug it into a PC and go through all those steps. The convenience of that option is honestly, I think one of the nicest new changes about this controller, aside from the the addition of back buttons. All these changes together I think are for the better and the Pro 2 is basically just a flat out upgrade of the Pro Plus. That being said, it does not address every single issue that the Pro Plus has. And there's two in particular that really bother me. One, removing and changing batteries. I don't know what it is about the shape and design of the battery bay in these things, but it is super tight. Tight enough that I guess you never have to worry about batteries somehow becoming loose. If you rely on just recharging the battery that's pre-installed, Honestly, it's not that big of a deal and I think it's a better way to go, but if you like the idea of being able to swap over to double A's in an emergency situation rather than plugging it in. Another thing is that like the Pro Plus, this controller cannot wake up your Switch. A feature that to me is not a make or break thing. It's nice to have, but I don't really care that hard about it. But I know for a lot of people out there, being able to wake up the Switch is a must have feature on a wireless controller. And it is still something that is missing from this one. If you were on the fence about the Pro Plus before, or if there were just certain features missing from the Pro Plus that you really wanted to see to make it worth buying for you, this adds a lot of stuff that's missing, aside from being able to wake up the Switch. As for the question of whether or not it's worth upgrading to a Pro 2, honestly, I think it's a little more up in the air. Most of the reasons why I like the Pro Plus have to do with the comfort of the controller, the ability to use it on Switch and PC, the D-pad, all stuff that is already handled by the Pro Plus. That being said, the new additions that it offers are nice upgrades that if they are features you're interested in, can make it worth it. If you really need to have back buttons and you like the idea of the profile swapping, I do think it can be worth upgrading and paying the 50 bucks to get a new controller all over again. Or you don't really see yourself grabbing them, I don't think it's a necessary upgrade. I think this pushes it more and more in the category of something worth buying if you didn't invest in one already, but if you already have a Pro Plus, this is not a night and day difference. It really just comes down to whether or not those handful of new features are things that you've been waiting to see. For those of you that don't have a Pro Plus though, a lot of the sales pitch here is very much the same for what I pushed about the Pro Plus in the past. For what you get in terms of features and quality at the price point it is, this is a fantastic controller. Head to head with an official Switch Pro controller, I do think as far as comfort goes, I do like the feel of the official Switch Pro controller a little more. But in terms of the button quality, the list of features added, what you can do with the app, there's a lot this thing offers at a lower price point that just makes it way more appealing. If you're interested in grabbing this controller, I'll have a link down below to check out. As always guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button as well. And if you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and do it. Cause you know, I got more videos on the way, I promise.